Let's talk about just a rectangle, a more specific rectangle, like one that's five by three. Without saying a number, don't say a number. If you're thinking about saying a number to answer the question I'm about to ask, don't do that. So what kind of thing is not an answer to my question right now? Number. Numbers. No numbers, okay. So when you think about a rectangle, whether it be this one or any one, what is area? Nice, uh, specific, yet kind of general answer, right? The number of squares that can fit inside of a thing in a space, right? We talked about area a long time ago. We, we said we could figure out how many rectangles fit in a space. We could figure out how many circles, how many hexagons, how many pentagons, whatever. Okay? Squares just turn out to be the easiest, most efficient shape to use. So uh, the number for area, if I tell you that the area is this number, I'm saying it's how many squares fit inside this space. So if this rectangle is five on one side, say five inches, and this one is, this side is three inches, okay? Well, one inch square, there, there's one right there, one inch square, right? There's an example of what one would look like. In total, without drawing them all out, how would I calculate how many squares can fit inside of this rectangle? Molly? Uh. Can I use numbers for this? Yes, you can use numbers for this. Right? You would multiply three by five. Multiply three by five, because here we have room enough for three squares, and since three rows of five, five rows of three. Right, either way, five, I say columns, since they're going up like that. So five columns of three, or three rows of five. Either we look at it, there are how many squares can fit in that rectangle? Fifteen. Fifteen can fit inside that rectangle. Okay, would that, would that approach work for any rectangle? Yes. Okay, so for this rectangle, what would the area be? Seven Multiply the length <coughs> by the width. Because that's the formula for the area of a rectangle? No. no. Because why? <coughs> it's basically type. It's the formula. No. We are a, a, not a formula of memorizing class. We are an understanding the concept class. There are four sides of seven. Four sides instead of two. That's why seven times x. Twelve. <coughs> oh, x. Why? Is, why would seven times x tell me about the area of this rectangle? Yes. Because we're trying to the number of rows by the number of columns. Yeah, well said. Okay, so number of columns would be seven. The number of rows that we can fit would be x, right? It's variable. What is that? It could be three. It could be twenty-five. We don't know, but whatever it would be. Whatever it turns out to be, we would multiply by seven, and it would tell us how many rows, sorry, yeah, how many rows of seven would fit inside of this rectangle, okay? Now, the perimeter, without telling me some formula for perimeter, tell me what perimeter is. Uh, it's the um, length around the outside edge of the shell. It's a length, right? We measure a length around the whole thing, if I were walking around this rectangle and just measuring how far I walked in total, that's the perimeter, right? So all the way around, that's the perimeter. That's what perimeter is. So if you walked all the way around this, this rectangle, how far will you go? What will be the perimeter? <coughs> two x's there. Does that make sense, right? I'm gonna, in, in walking around this thing, I'll walk past two sevens, and I'll walk past two x's, and I would just add those together. So the perimeter would be two x plus 14, right? Two times seven is 14. Okay? We all agree? Agreed. Does that make sense? Makes sense. Okay. Did we memorize some formulas today? No. I hope not. I hope that we can make enough sense of what area is and what perimeter is to just say, well, if I want to know what the area is, I would take the rows and the columns, and if I want to know the perimeter is, I would just add up all the sides. Yeah. Yes? Can you do like seven times two plus two x? That's pretty much what this is. This is just seven times two is 14. Okay. 
Now, could we make a formula out of this? Of course, because every rectangle, we're going to find the perimeter in exactly the same way. Could the, the formula be 2 times L plus 2 times W? Yes, and you may have used that, okay? But if you're not taking at least a second to make your brain explain this to you and why it's true, then you're doing yourself a disservice, all right? If you think that's the formula, just remind yourself, well, 2 times L, and the length, okay, I would walk past this and this again, I would walk past this width and this width, uh, I would walk past it twice, so yeah, that makes sense, okay? We're just plugging numbers into formulas that we hope we remember correctly, we're eventually not gonna remember those formulas correctly, and we're gonna be kinda hosed, all right? So, well done, well done. Any questions about that? Bridger? Is there a formula for every single shape? Um, is there a formula for every shape? Yeah. Or like every outline of shape or whatever. Well, I guess it depends. Like, uh, I suppose you could make a formula for every shape on some things. Like, uh, uh, for a rectangle, it's easier because rectangles are special. Two sides are always equal to each other. The other two sides are always equal to each other. So you know that that's going to be that way. If you just did it for like a, a pentagon, Then it's harder because not there's no rules about how big the sides would have to be. So the, the formula would have to be like uh, side A plus side B plus side C plus side D plus side E. Mm -hmm. That's the only formula I could really come up with. So but I mean, like they don't have straight sides. They have like they're all curved. Oh, curving is now you're talking about calculus. For calculus. Well, calculus is I mean, that. Yeah, I guess you could come up with it. But uh, finding the area of a curvy thing mm -hmm. is a very big challenge. And it's not, not really a formula for that. No, yeah. More like a, an approach. Uh, we have to have all sorts of stipulations on that. What's the point of calculus? What's the point? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it could be summed up in two, two questions. If this is a graph, which we haven't started to do yet in this class, If this is a graph of some function, and I look at this point right here, and I ask, what's the slope of that line at that point? If that line only touches the graph at that one place, uh, that's kind of like half of calculus, and the other half is, let's take a function. It could, could be this graph, this could be a different graph. The question, and this is more to uh, Bridger's question, What's the area underneath this thing? Okay. It's really the it's the math of change. This if I look at any point, I'll have a different slope here than I do here than I do here. And one half of calculus answers that question, the other half answers how do I take a function and find the area underneath this curvy thing? So that's real brief not very detailed explanation of the kinds of things we talk about in calculus. But those two questions, to answer those and to maybe take them a little bit farther takes all of calculus to do. Uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to hand out the activity to you. Let me explain. There are well, seven figures, okay? Let's say you start with focus on the, the first four. They're a little more straightforward than the other three. These figures here, they're rectangle, or they're like the mashing together of two rectangles. All right. Every one of these shapes has naturally a perimeter and an area. That's no big surprise. So you're going to write an equation for the area of this guy and the perimeter of this guy. Right. And the thing about every one of these figures is that the number that you get for the area and the number you get for the perimeter are going to be the same. Okay? Now that doesn't like could perimeter be the same as the area? <coughs> yes. Yeah. On a square mm -hmm. it could be. On a square the perimeter could be the same as the area. I mean could it could, yeah, I mean, could it literally be the same thing? No. no. Why not the same? Two different things. 
Well, how explain that, how they're two different things? Um, the, well, basically, if you were to like draw a, um, a square, the line that you use to draw the square is the perimeter, and then all the empty space, or not empty, but all that space inside of it is the area. So, can somebody go, I mean, that's good. Is there, can we take a little bit farther and, and put it in, like, some concrete terms? Like, this is what area is, this is what perimeter is, and this is why they couldn't be the same. Perimeter is, like, how long the line, if you take all the lines and the... Okay, how long it is. Yeah, how long it is, when you take all the lines in the line straight. Area is the space contained by the lines when they're in that shape. Okay, Danielle? Um. Area is solid and perimeter is um, hollow, I guess. Hollow? Okay, there's like, no, there's, well. It's not hollow, too, because it's like, like, so, um, area is everything inside a shape, mm -hmm. where it is, whereas um, perimeter is just the outside edge of the shape, so it's not filled in. It's, so. I think maybe what you mean by hollow is like, when I measure perimeter, I measure it with, these kinds of things, like lines, which have one dimension, right? They only have one dimension, it's this long. But what kind of things do I measure area with? The inside of the dimension. Squares, I measure it with squares. Okay, now let's say this is one inch and this is one inch squared. One equals one, but one inch doesn't equal one inch squared, right? right. So. The thing is about these figures, they happen to have the same number for the area, the same number for the perimeter. The number that you get for the area, the number that you get for the perimeter are the same number. Okay? I'm talking about this at length because I don't want you to get confused and think, oh, the area and the perimeter are the same. They could be, one is measured in squares, one is measured in lines, lengths. Right? So they have different things, but the numbers happen to be the same. Okay? So to start with, showing your work back here on the back. Right, for figure A, figure B, figure C, figure so on. I want you to go up here. Um, I want you to write equations for the area of the perimeter of each of these. Okay? And then those things are going to be equal to each other. So I want you to write an equation given that the area and perimeter are, the numbers are equal to each other. Okay? That may come to you, or I, you may have to wait a bit, but at least you can write the area and perimeter equations, and then if need be, I'll come along and we'll all talk about it together about how we can use the fact that the perimeter and area are equal. So, the so just like we did at the first start? Pretty much, except for, we want to go one step further, okay? So show me how they're equal? Not show me how they're equal, we have to be told that they're equal, because there's no way to know that unless somebody tells us. Like, can you ever know what the area of this rectangle is, like, as a set number? Nope. No way to know until I know what what? Thank you, Ethan. Until I know x. Right? Can I ever just figure out what x is if I don't know what the area is? No, but what I am telling you, what we are going to assume about the figures on the paper, is that the area and the perimeter have the same number. Right? So they would be equal to each other. A little bit more in the, the uh, directions there. Okay, let's pretend like this figure is part of that thing there. Okay. Yeah. So I've, I've written an equation for the area. Now we're going to write an equation for the perimeter. Okay, there it is. The thing that I said on the worksheet there about, well, what did I say about the area and perimeter on that worksheet? The same. Their values are the same. The numbers that, that represent the, the perimeter and the area are the same. So, like, with an equation, I'm saying this, okay? It's not quite where we want to be, but I am saying that the area, the number for the area, is equal to the number for the perimeter, right? Mm -hmm. But that's unsolvable. Well, I can't solve A equals B. I don't know what A is, I don't know what P is, and so I'm just kind of stuck. But, what is A? The area. How do I calculate it? 7x. Oh, so A can be replaced with 7x. Right. Okay. How about P? It can be replaced with 2x plus 14. Yeah. 14, huh? 
now we have an equation. Right. There's x's and constants in there, right? And it's a little different than what we solved before. But it's the point of this whole thing, like, is to see what do we do when we have variables on both sides. Yeah, um, I don't know. I know how to do. I know how to do. I kind of know how to do if there's like two different variables on each side, but not the same variable. Well, two different variables make it even unsolvable unless you know what one of the variables was. What? But this is only one variable. There's only one variable. The same number needs to go here as goes here. They're not two different numbers. They're the exact same number. We just need to find it out. Now, what we do not want to do, because we do not want to cripple ourselves for the future, we do not want to plug in numbers, guessing and check, guessing, check, I'll take guessing, forever. check. It would take long, it wouldn't, maybe it wouldn't take too long if the number, like the answer was a two, maybe you would guess two early on. But if the answer is one and a third, like if it's really big, it's going to be hard to guess. If it's a fraction, it's going to be hard to guess. If it's a repeating decimal, it's going to be hard to guess. Okay? We want to give that up, give up that lifestyle of guessing and checking and guessing. Okay. So that's that's what algebra is all about. It's about putting guessing and checking behind us, treating the equation like it's a scale, it's a balanced scale, manipulating both sides and keeping both sides balanced, and getting that variable by itself. Okay. Let's take this first one for example. Let's take this first one for example. All right. So number well letter A. What formula do we get, or what equation do we get for the area? 3x. 3x. Okay, so 3 rows, x, columns, that's how we calculate the number of squares. Perimeter? 2x. 2x plus 6. 2x plus 6. 2x plus 6. Okay, so what we're saying is, if I take 3x and get some number, I get 20,000, which is not what is going to happen here. Okay. Just, just to say, 20,000. Then say I take that same x and I plug it in here, we also get 20,000, except for, of course, that's a made-up number, and that's not going to be the case. We can, as I said, plug numbers here and here, see when the, the area of the perimeter finally comes out to be the same number, and you will have found the value of x. You will have not made any progress in learning algebra. <gasps> make some progress. And let me help you make some progress by showing you a picture of what this equation looks like. All right? uh, so here's the equation. 2x plus 6 equals 3x. It's the exact same thing I just did back here. I set perimeter and area equal to each other. I said, oh, area is 7x. Perimeter is 2x plus 14. And now I have an equation with just x's in there. I can get x by itself. So here's what the equation looks like. If I think of it as a scale, which is exactly correct, that is exactly what it is. It's two sides of a scale, balanced, perfectly level. Okay. On one side of the equation, let's, let's start on the right side. Let's the right side is a little bit straightforward, I think. On the right side, we have 3 times an x. That's the three x's. Right? Here is an x, like a canister that we use as a variable there on the scale. Okay, there's two of them, that's 2x, here's 3x, 3 times an x, an x, 3 times. Over here we have an x 2 times, so there's one, two of them, plus six, right, six things that represent one, they represent two one. So far, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so far so good, okay. So here's how algebra works. We mess with both sides of the scale until we just have one x on one side, a bunch of ones on the other side, and then the scale is telling us this x, this one x is the same as this many ones, and so you know what x is, right? You know how many are in one canister. So what we're going to do is mess around with the scale, taking things from both sides, adding things to both sides, whatever we want to do to both sides, keeping both sides balanced, until there's one x on one side, and just a bunch of numbers, just a bunch of ones on the other side. So can you see what you might do if this was an actual scale, what would you add to or take away? So, uh, you could take like the, I guess like the x's, you could take the two and cancel that out and then take the other two. So take these off, yeah. which is great because on one of the sides we want to just have a bunch of ones. So we take them off, they're over here now, they're on the, on the table, they're not there anymore. Right now what's, what's happening to the scale? 
It's unbalanced. Which side is up? The left side is up because it's lighter now. So we will balance it out. We'll take off two of the X's here. Okay, they're gone. Now let's see where we stand. Over there we have a bunch of ones, that's great. Like we don't want X's on the same side as ones, we want X's on the other side. So can you tell me from looking at this picture how much one X is? Six. There's only one X left on this side, right? There's only one X left and it's equal to six. Let's see it, the equation. We're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna take two X from this side and take two X from this side and we get no X's, zero, right? just a six on this side. Equals three x minus two x is just one x. And so just kind of our good luck, x is six, and we know what x is. Now, what if this happens? What if I did some stuff with my equation and I wound up getting like two x equals 24? What would I do then? Divide by two. It says divide by two. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 times x equals 12. Equals 12. That's exactly what I mean. Okay, so if we do some taking of x's off of both sides, right, and we have a nice thing like just a bunch of 1's on this side and x's on this side, we need to divide, we need to multiply by a reciprocal of a fraction or what have you to get x by itself. Right? Setting up that equation is key. Getting, getting x's on one side and 1's on the other side, that's key. Okay.